Did Sears bring an insurance company along in the development of the airplane, or do you just have to go out and pray somebody will insure you? No, Sears did a great job with this. They brought along, I think it was three insurance companies through the development and the test flying, and those insurance companies became kind of Cirrus favored companies, and you can get your insurance through them, and Cirrus actually helps broker that if you want to. Um, I, I was able to get insurance without any limitation of uh, hours. Their limitation was if you go through the Cirrus training and you get your type rating, we will insure you. Now, I don't know if that was because of my hours or what, but I was able to do that. But I, I could only have so much of a limit until I got 100 hours. Once I hit 100 hours, I can raise my limit of liability to a higher level. Uh, so, and I've got, I mean, I had uh, roughly 60 hours before I ever took my plane by myself. But, you know, they also talk about this plane being a, a owner-operator type pilot aircraft. Um, I was number 68 certified pilot, okay, and of that, there were only, at that time, only about 24 um, that were certified to operate the plane that wasn't a salesman, an FAA examiner, a test pilot, a demo pilot, or an instructor. So the majority of those people were serious people or FAA people. Um, and my plane is serial number 29. But I was the first pilot to take delivery of his aircraft and fly it home by himself. So it gives you an idea. <laughs> <laughs> it kind of gives you an idea of really, it's not as easy as they say it is. Yeah. It takes time. It takes, you know, effort. Uh, it's not for the lighthearted. And, and I would say uh, there, were, there were three types of people I met up there that were in, in the training. The first type were pro-pilots. There were a lot of people who had positions hiring pilots to fly the plane for them. The second group were people like myself, owner-operators that really wanted to understand what it took to fly the plane. And then the third group were people I'd never get in a plane with. I just, <laughs> <laughs> Man, I don't know. Like, because you know, they would be, I just got my IFR rating, or I just you know, got 300 hours, or oh thinking, man, wow. I... <laughs> okay. Gary. Yeah, so uh, what's going to happen in the secondary market? Is Cirrus going to offer training to the secondary market purchaser? Cirrus is still figuring that out. You know, they're a small company and they've got some growing pains. And uh, they have some weak spots in their circle of, of operation. And, and that weak spot moves as they're growing and maturing, you know, for a few period months, it's, it's training. They got more people than they got instructors. The next thing is they got more, uh, they don't have enough planes to do the training. The next thing is they've got to stop production for an issue, which kind of has a ripple effect. I mean, they've got a lot of, because it's a small company and they only really make two types of planes, you know, they, they're learning as they go to some degree but they're extremely committed to doing it right. I would think to protect the brand, even in the secondary market, they're going to have to offer training. Well, that's or have training from Flight Safety or some other organization available to those people. Insurance companies make it a requirement. Because there's otherwise, only, there's, only one, cascade. there's only one person right now in the whole world that can give a check ride in an SF-50 Vision Jet, and that's how they're doing it. Okay. Wow. That's amazing. There's only one. And they're getting ready to get two. Both of them are Cirrus employees, so they're 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 wearing both hats. But they're kind of an FAA examiner first because that's the highest level. So right now there's one. They're getting ready to do a second one. Put one in Duluth and one in Knoxville. And right now, so Cirrus is controlling that very very heavily. And that's why I mean that's why I was the first one to fly the plane out out of 29 they delivered because they're really controlling the process. Um, they're really controlling it, and and I right now I've got two records. I got I got the speed record, which is 418 knots indicated straight level flight. Now that one will get broken. Right? I mean that's just 
And, you know, the, the current record holder is the next loser. Is the way I look at it. <laughs> uh, but, but I will always be the first pilot that ever took delivery of a Sears jet and flew it home by himself. Yeah, I'm sure there was somebody in Duluth watching you on flight. Oh, they, they were. Yeah, you made it. <laughs> Dale, Dale Flatmire, okay, uh, Patrick Waddick, the president of operations, Dale, who's the CEO, and each one of my instructors were there when I was leaving because Dale said, you know, Jay, we're going to watch you. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, it was cool. <clears throat> when I got in that plane and I shut the door and I looked around, <laughs> all right, this is it. Let's go do it. Let's go do it. What's the pre flight like? It, in the beginning, it's very long and very slow. You got here at 5.30 this morning. It gets better with time, but the one thing they drill into you in, in jet training is checklist, 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 checklist. And if you're not doing a checklist, or if it's not a memory item, a memory item are the first two or three things you do in certain emergencies, they want to see you on a checklist. And... Uh, that's, that's what they drill into you. So the pre-flight is very specific, um, just like you know most aircraft. It's just longer. It, it's, it's a longer pre-flight. It, but it, you know, every aircraft has a flow. You know, and, and you're, how many hours do you have in your 22 now? 100. Okay, so you're, now you're into a flow. Yeah. You, you know what the checklist is, you use it, but you also know the flow. And it took about, about 60 hours for me to get the flow you know, of the checklist inside on the aircraft. Exterior checklist, you know, pretty basic. But it's the interior that changes. Yes, sir. Um, as far as takeoff roll and landing roll, is this College Daily Airport a little on the marginal side for the jet? Or? No, it's, it's really not. But full loads, hot day, I got to be concerned about it. Because my, my mentor pilot, when, when we finished, I asked him, I said, tell me the one thing you want me to remember more than anything else based on your experience now and based on what you've seen, what do you want me to always remember? And he said, always remember how long it takes this plane to get off the ground. And the hotter the day, the more you need to be concerned about it. So I would say on a 95 degree day, full load, this will be a short runway. <coughs> and there might be missions where I have to pick people up at Chattanooga <coughs> in order to make it right. Um, but that's something you know, I've got to be careful of. But I, so far, I've been able to land here and not break yeah. and be able to turn around and come back. So, of course, that uphill part helps. <laughs> yeah. Important question. How long does it take you to get to Texas? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, Dallas used to be round trip seven hours. It would be shorter, you know, coming home, but longer going. So it's always a seven-hour trip in my 22, no matter what. <clears throat> and the, the jet takes off about a third of that maybe a little bit more, you know, so it's a, it's a four, it's a 2.15, you know, four and a half hour flight round trip now. Uh, but the, the beauty of it is, is that extra, you know, third is nice, but it's quiet. The plane's not, you know, doesn't have that engine vibration to it, it's pressurized. So when you get there, you just, you feel so much better. Uh, because it's a pressurized cabin. Well, it's all about your entertainment Yeah, and the XM flight. radio system is also <laughs> in This was the first plane they delivered with a flip-down 19-inch color TV for the back seat. <laughs> <laughs> so you can watch my wife. My wife and I are going to Waco next week, and she's going to sit in the back seat and watch a movie. You know? Yeah. Okay, I've got to ask this question. <laughs> my wife's intrigued. That's a good <laughs> What's the lead time if a deposit's given today until you get your plane... And then, What's your do you know do you know anything about buying a position? Because that's very confusing. Well, I always tell people, um, life's based on two things, time and money. And they're not always equal. And, and right now, time for position holders is more important than money because people have been waiting so long. But about half of the people I met in, in Duluth had bought positions from people who had been in it as long as I have been. Because what do you ever do? For 11 years, that you you're patient enough for 11 years for it to happen. So there's a lot of position holders selling their positions. I was offered a really good sum of money for my position, and I just said no. So if you want to move up the ladder, it's going to cost you some money. 
and if you want to buy a position, it's still going to cost you money because the price of this plane is going to do nothing but keep going up, 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 up. So I look at it as it's the same money. It's just a matter of when do you want to put it in the game because you're going to pay just as much three, four years from now as you do if you bought the position now and got in it. So, And there's 600 position holders right now. Uh, I was position number 24, plane number 29, and the lowest <coughs> position I've seen for sale was 61. Wow. What's their completion rate right now? They're trying to get on one a week, but they're about two to three a month right okay. now. Yeah. <coughs> yes, sir. Hey, if you uh, fly 500, 500 hours a year, mm -hmm. What do you figure your operating cost is per hour? Well, the fuel, believe it or not, Gen A is cheaper than 100 low lead, and it can be a lot cheaper if you're members of different fuel purchasing clubs. Um, but the fuel burns about 70 to 75 gallons an hour, so at four dollars a gallon, you know that's 280 bucks. Let's say at 70, so your flight, your fuel is that. Um, I bought what's called the Jet Concierge package, which includes a full warranty from Cirrus. It includes all maintenance items from Cirrus. It includes all service updates from Cirrus. It includes wear and tear from Cirrus. It includes my six month and 12 month check rides from Cirrus. What about your age? Can't ensure that. <laughs> I see you over there. I'm making names. I'm making names. Don't worry about you. Yeah, I'm making names. Um, so I bought, I bought a, a three-year, 600-hour program. And the average hourly rate, because they measure it by engine hours, and that's about $370 an hour for the engine. So you put those two things together, you're getting close to $800 just where it just flight wet wet cost is what people consider it being. You know, I I would say rule of thumb, take that and double it. You know, for cost of money and and pilot time and other stuff. You know, if, if you were to see one in charter, I would expect it to be no no less than two grand an hour, but the actual cost, including insurance, hangers and stuff like that, if you flew it two hundred hours a year would probably be about a thousand to eleven hundred dollars an hour what I would guess it to be. The more you fly it, the lower those fixed costs are per hour. Um, that's what I would estimate. And I've seen fuel prices all the way up to $7 and all the way down to $2.50. Wow. That's how much yeah. you can expect. So you got to really plan where you're landing and where you're buying fuel. Because you buy a lot. I tell people it's a fast way to spend a lot of money. <laughs> buy a jet. Hey, Jay, because of the jet, is there a landing fee where you go in these different places to come to the jet? I, mean, I haven't. I, I've seen a few, there. but I mean, I haven't been up in the Northeast where I'm sure there are. It's more yeah. prevalent. Okay. I had a $15 landing fee in Hayward, California. Okay. Uh, but nothing <coughs> significant. Okay. I mean, every you'll have fees at FBOs if you don't buy fuel. Oh, so you got to buy fuel. Jay, I just got one question for you. When yes. you get your carbon code built, are you going to put it out in Moab, Utah, and then fly the Sears out there? <laughs> <laughs> I hadn't thought of that. <laughs> I hadn't thought of that. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, there's someone else that had a question. Oh, yeah. After yeah. you land and you're taxiing up to the FBO, if you had to put a percentage on it, how much cooler do you feel in that plane? <laughs> 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 needs to be in order to get the chicken to pick it, okay? Because <laughs> right now they see the plane, they don't see the pilot. Uh, but when I was when I was at, I was in Kissimmee last week and the, the lady behind the counter said, Mr. Jolly, she said, if I had a dollar for everybody that wanted to look at your plane while you were here, she said, especially the big iron guys, the guys flying the Gulf Streams and mm -hmm. stuff, I mean, they, they want to see it. And uh, it's an amazing cockpit. And they, they tell you when you take delivery, they say, whenever you get out of your plane, put the lower stair door up. He sa they said, because everybody will oh, want to yeah. get in your aircraft. And he said, mm -hmm. if you go inside use the bathroom, you'll come out, somebody will be sitting in your aircraft. <laughs> <laughs> so, but yeah, it's a, there's a huge cool factor to it, because a lot of people haven't seen them. And there's still a lot of ATC people that ask you, tell me about the plane. How fast does it go? I mean, it's pretty interesting. Um, yeah, it's, it's got a cool factor to it.